Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in the 8th Summer 2020 update from Gasway. So here we go again, it's Sunday, it's time to bring you another Summer update. This one is going to be focusing on the QBO, the quasi Biennial Oscillation. I shall get on that for you uh, in a second. Just say that the first video of today was our nice little 7am update, just having a look at weather for the next two or three days. We've got Gasway with Sunday Roundup coming up for you just after lunch. And we'll be live streaming, going to have a live stream um, uh, at 6 o'clock tonight, which will be a long range. We'll be focusing on the long range uh, data. So we're going to look at CFS and also Patal Peng's analogs for summer, autumn and winter 2021-2022. So I shall see you live uh, from 6 o'clock. Um, so this is going to be a shortened version of the 8th update. I did like the first version of this, uh, but it was over 30 minutes. It was epic. It was absolutely fantastic. Everything went, everything went wonderfully well with it. I mean, I got to the very end, stopped the video, and, and the recording crashed. And I've had to reboot everything up. So it's very late as I'm recording this. It's gone quarter past 11 um, on Saturday, the, uh, what is it, Saturday the 8th of uh, May. I've had a nightmare. So the the update that I wanted to bring, I, I'm, a, I'm unable to bring you that update. Uh, I can't show you the April pattern matches that we got together uh, you know, and, and Shrine in particular was absolutely amazing getting the pad matches together. But I will show you those next week. So you're going to see those uh, next week. Next week going to be an Enso update as well. So it'll be like April data uh, combined with Enso uh, next week. Um, for this one, I all I can show you is like the QBO because it got so very, very late. So so it's not the update that I wanted to bring you. But nevertheless, you are going to see um, the, the data for, for the QBO. I should get on with it for you uh, in, in a moment. Thank you so much to Richard, for the fantastic Gazwell Vids Summer 2020 updates gift. I could do with going to the beach, actually, right now. Just abandoning everything and scooting off to the beach and de-stressing. I think it would do me good. But thank you so much to Rich for the gift. And also thank you so much to Shryan. And Shryan, I promise we will, I will show uh, you the pattern matches that you got together uh, for this update uh, next week as part of the ninth update. I, I promise you, Shryan, I will, I will do that. Thank you so much, as ever to, to Shrine Brewing for all of the help uh, on on this update and, and next week's update as well. So thanks to Shrine. Thank you to Richard. Right, so uh, let's do this. So uh, we're going to look at the QBO, as I say, for this 8th summer 2021 update. So this is the QBO page from... Uh, no, remember, quasi being oscillation is just an index that's uh, reflecting the atmospheric state. It doesn't drive anything in its own terms. It just tells us uh, what the atmosphere is doing. It's reflecting the strength of the solar west is. So it's primarily a winter thing, uh, the QBO. So, so in an easy QBO, you, you weaken the zone of west is, you can get an increased chance of blocking. In a west QBO, you strengthen the zone of west is, and, and you can get, uh, and you, and you get an increased chance of a milder west zone on Atlantic during winter. But we do look at the QBO all year round. Um, as it's one of the key drivers uh, of the atmospheric state. Uh, right, so this is a QBO page showing every uh, month's worth of QBO days going all the way back to 1948. However, in the 1940s and early 1950s, it's unreliable. So it's really from around 1953, 1954, but it becomes uh, reliable around here. So when you're in an EC QBO, you've got these negative uh, numbers here. Uh, when you're in a positive QBO, you've, you're in a Wesley QBO, you've got these positive numbers. I'm very, very tired now of doing like a 30-minute recording, 30-minute version of this, and it crashing. So I'll probably be stumbling over my words, not making a great deal of sense. It's just because of how tired I am having to do this uh, for, a, for a second time. Um, so uh, positive uh, positive numbers are Wesley QBO. Negative numbers are Eastley QBO. Let's come down to the current year, Ben. So we come down to 2021. There it is just there. So we begin 2021 with a Wesley QBO, strongly positive numbers, plus 10.19, plus 8.92, plus 9.75. That is reflective, uh, you know, those numbers are reflective of, of a pretty strong, mature Wesley QBO. We get through to April, look at that, we go down to minus, uh, we go down to plus 5.25. Not yet negative, not yet minus numbers, but but that is a uh, significant weakening from March to April. And what we're expecting to happen is that through May, June, July and August, we should see negative numbers appearing. So we think, I think this summer, 
is going to be a easterly transitioning summer or a developing easterly QBO summer. And so that's what we're looking at with our analogs for this eighth update. So the first summer that we've got, but is a developing easterly QBO summer, is a summer of 1958. This one has below average heights, low pressure over into the west of the country. You bring a strong west ejection. It is combined with northern blocking as well. This is a cool and wet summer. Summer with the developing ECQBO of 1958. Remember, we think that's what's going to happen for summer 2021, but, but it's not guaranteed we might get a failure of the ECQBO again like we did last year, but I'll be surprised if we do. Our next summer with a developing ECQBO is the summer of 1960. This one, again, with low pressure over Western Europe combined with high pressure blocking in the Arctic, this developing easterly QBO summer is a cool and wet summer in 1960. Our next developing easterly QBO summer is going to be the summer of 1962. This one will have low pressure over and to the east of the country, or does have low pressure over and to the east of the country, and so it pulls in winds from a cold northwesterly direction. This is a very cool summer in 1962. It precedes the daddy of cold winters for 62, 63. It's not a particularly wet summer, but it is very mixed and it is a cool summer in 1962, a particularly notably cool actually, um, with the temperature never really getting above around 27 degrees. So the maximum temperature for that summer is 27 degrees, uh, which is a notably no low, uh, you know, maximum temperature. So an abnormally cool summer, quite mixed as well, not a washout, but very chilly in the summer of 1962, the developing ECQBO. Our next summer is 1967, the summer of love, of course. This one has has above average heights across West Europe, below average heights away to our northwest. Jet stream is pushed northwards as well. So that is a drier summer. Um, not as unsettled and a little bit warmer as well. It's not a particularly good summer in its own terms, but for 1960 summers, which is a notoriously bad decade, it's not too bad. Then we have the summer of 1972. So this one is an unsettled summer with lots of low pressure across much of northern and western Europe. Again, that does coincide with a developing easterly QBO. What comes next? Oh, look, it's the daddy of hot summers. It's a summer of 1976. And, uh, and this is the reason that the summer of 1976 is the daddy of hot summers. Because it has a big area of high pressure centered over top of the country. It has lots and lots of low pressure out to our north and west. It brings in these hot easterly winds. It's exceptionally dry summer. It's a very, very hot summer uh, as well. It is the daddy of hot summers for a very good reason. But it's the end of the great drought of the 1970s. And it does have a developing easterly QBO. Our next summer is the summer of 1981. This one with above average heights out to our west, below average heights to our northeast. Winds in from more of a northerly direction. So that's a cool and dry summer in 1981. Just some warm weather at times, but overall it's a cool and dry summer. The summer of 1983 is another hot summer with a developing ECQBO. So uh, this one for a long time had the hottest July on record. It was superseded by 2006. Um, but nevertheless, this is a very, very warm, hot summer. Uh, has a 19 Celsius CET July. Um, really hot summer in uh, 1983. So two hot summers, 76 and 83, both developing Eastly QBO summers. How interesting is that? Uh, then we have a summer of 1986. Back to normal, really, with this one. With below average heights over and to the west of the country. Income, the westy wings. That is going to be a cool summer, especially late on. So the early part of the summer, June 1986, actually isn't too bad. Just have quite a bit of dry and, and fine weather. But by July, particularly August, it's all going down the pan. And August 1986 is a very cool and wet month. 1988 is also a bad uh, summer. It has one of the worst Julys of the 20th century. With lots of low pressure extending through 
uh, Western Europe too. So that is a really bad summer in 1988. 1991 is our next one with a developing easterly QBO. This one has uh, low pressure out to our west and income uh, the westerlies. So this one is a, is a bat-loaded summer. So it has a cold and wet June, but it has a dry and very warm to hot August and into September as well. Then we have uh, 2000. That's our next uh, summer with a developing Easterly QBO. This one is a warm, wet summer. Has lots of low pressure across northwest Europe. It's a little bit of blocking uh, as well. Has quite a quite a cool and miserable July. Otherwise, it's a relatively warm summer, but always unsettled. Rain never far away, and quite a thundery sort of summer as well. I think in 2000. Uh, 2007 is our next summer with a developing Easterly QBO. This one has northern blocking with high pressure around Greenland and back into the Arctic. Low pressure is over UK and Western Europe. The jet stream is plummeting south as well. That's a cold and wet summer in 2007, particularly, particularly notably so in June and July, which are exceptionally wet months. It does get a little bit drier into August. Summer of 2009 is our next with a developing uh, easterly QBO. Our next summer with a developing easterly QBO. This one is an unsettled summer. It's a barbecue summer, as uh, predicted by the UK Met, famously. Um, so this one is unsettled. Uh, it has a cool, wet July. Otherwise, June and August have a reasonable amount of dry weather at times and, and pretty warm. Notice this one does have a strong northern blocking signal as well. Maybe setting up the pattern for the coming winter 0910. Does follow a teaser winter as well for 0809. Our next summer with a developing ECQBO is 2011. It does seem like the QB, ECQBO does develop a lot in the summer, actually, as opposed to other time of year. I'm not sure why that should be, uh, particularly, it could just be coincidence. Um, but the summer of 2011 is our next developing ECQBO. So this one again. With extensive high latitude blocking, a travel low pressure across the rest of Europe, that is another cool and unsettled summer. Then we have 2014. This is a very strange summer. It has a hot July with a 17 Celsius CT. Uh, with a 17 Celsius CT. Um, but August is the coolest since 1993. This one also has a lot of northern blocking around Greenland and into the Arctic. Low pressure is to our south income. Those easterly winds. That is a very, very mixed summer. Very strange summer in 2014 with a hot July and a cold August. And then the last time we have a developing easterly QBO in the summer is 2017. It's a front-loaded summer summer. Has a lot of warm and dry weather in uh, June of 2017 to early July and then it all deteriorates. August is quite a cool and unsettled uh, month. Uh, winds in from the west. Lots of high pressure to ourselves. It's a hot summer for much of southern Europe but for northern Europe after a warm start it does show a marked deterioration. Right let's put all that together then. This is how all Junes combined are looking with a developing easterly QBO. Actually not a bad start to these summers with some higher pressure across the west of Europe, lower pressure is out to our northwest. So a reasonably sort of anti-cyclonic type signal with those uh, dunes, interestingly. But look what happens when we get into the July. So oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, high pressure goes up to the north, centres around uh, Greenland, low pressure, deep trough centres over the UK and West Europe, a cold and wet signal, cold and wet, uh, for those July. So the summers may start off, not too bad, with a developing easterly QBO, but downhill it goes into July, and that carries on into August. Well, it's how all August combined are looking with a developing easterly QBO. Has lots and lots of low pressure across Northwest Europe. High pressure is away to our Northwest. Jet stream is plummeting southwards uh, as well. Uh, so cold and cool anyway and wet for July and August. June definitely the best of it. It's how all summers combined are looking with a developing easterly QBO. Finally, 
and uh, it's bad, isn't it? Pretty bad. Lots of load pressure across Western Europe. There is normal blocking at work with this as well. So a cold and wet signal for those summers when we have a developing ECQBO, albeit June uh, definitely favours something a little bit drier and warmer and that's it that's your eight summer 2021 update i'm so sorry but it isn't the update that i wanted you to see um but these things happen you know we're dealing with tech sometimes things uh, go wrong so it's about half the length of what the eighth update was originally planned to be um but it's nearly half past 11 as i'm recording this i've got to get it processed and uploaded to youtube so so i've had to shorten this one down and i'm sorry about that um but there we go these things happen and um at least i've still got all of the charts you know from the from the april pattern matches uh, on the pc so i'll be able to show you those um of course next uh next week for the ninth update so so you'll be able to see those next week when we do do the ninth update and uh and yeah so so next week will be like uh april pattern matching slash enso special um, and, and I promise you we'll see that data uh, next week. Right, that's it then for the 8 summer update. So I think we've established that Eastern QBOs, when they're developing, are tending to be favouring, like, bad summers, really, although June is the best of it, um, but definitely favouring rather wetter uh, and cooler Julys and Augusts. And that is even with having 76 and 83 within the package of analogs. But clearly those two are the exception to the norm, uh, to the rule, and generally... You know, uh, these summers are pretty poor. We have a developing easterly QBO. But as I say, the QBO is primarily a winter driver. So so I wouldn't be overly worried about this. But um, but yeah, that's it anyway. That's it. So uh, this video is now within the playlist. Uh, uh, you have a summer updates playlist on YouTube. So you'll be able to watch this whenever you would like to do that. I'm going to stop the video there and hope that it, the, this version doesn't crash. And uh, then I'm going to go and collapse, actually, and cry uh, for about an hour <laughs> because of everything that's gone wrong tonight um and i shall see you later on for gasmo is sunny round up and we'll be live streaming from six o'clock i say the live stream is going to show you long range data we'll look at cfs and also for things analogs for summer autumn and winter too so uh yeah i'll see you live at six and no doubt you'll be wanting to know what went wrong tonight um and uh, just how blue the air was in gasmo these towers around <laughs> half an hour or so uh, ago. Right, that's it then. Uh, so I'm going to stop the video there. I'll see you later on for the live stream for the 8th summer 2020 update. That's all for now. And thanks for watching.